Hello, and welcome to the Satellite Image Deep Learning Podcast. I'm Robin Cole, and it's my pleasure to present another technically focused episode in the series. In this episode, I catch up with Roberto Del Pret to learn about PyRaws. PyRaws is a powerful open source Python package that provides a comprehensive set of tools for working with Sentinel-2 raw imagery. It provides tools for band co-registration, georeferencing, data visualization, and image processing. What is particularly exciting to me is that this software could be deployed onto future satellites, enabling onboard processing using Python. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, Roberto. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Really looking forward to this conversation today. Do you mind giving us a, a quick intro to where you are and what you do? Yeah. Um, I am actually a PhD student at the University of Naples, but I am also a visiting researcher for the ESA SRIN Philip. It's an AI laboratory based in Frascati. You already met my colleague, uh, Alistair. Yes, that's and right. We work on several stuff, different topics. My topic is the onboard processing of uh, level zero data. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And, yeah. So first question, what is level zero? Yeah, it's difficult to define uh, in a strict way what is level zero. For instance, for level level for uh, multispectral imagery is a thing for uh, SAR data is different, mm. but uh, we try to define like level zero the most raw product that we can get uh, from ground station. So, right. in, in the case of uh, of Sentinel two, uh, I will show you uh, a brief presentation of what is for us a uh, level zero row mm-hmm. product. And uh, maybe I can show you if I can, I can share my screen. Of course, yeah. And just so I can clarify and for the, the listeners that level zero is before you've done things like atmospheric correction. Yeah, of course. There's a lot yeah. of processing that we do not yeah. want to uh, like process on board, which can yeah. be really tough. So I, I have, um, I'm working with several uh, people in Philip with Gabriele Meoni, Nicolas Longepe, and Federico Serva uh, about our projects uh, in, on level zero Sentinel-2. Um, I, will also, I will also show you our developed framework Pyrus, for treating the level two data from Sentinel-2. Mm-hmm. Um, so first thing first, we already know what is AI for observation, but <laughs> why use uh, onboard the artificial intelligence? Um, one purpose uh, is for the early detection. We can achieve um, early detection so we can uh, lower uh, the, the time required for process and deliver to an end user only the actionable, actionable information. If we can place, if we can place the, the, the process on board. Mm-hmm. So if we can switch to the traditional processing paradigm and put directly the brain on board the satellite, we can lowering the data bandwidth. So we can diminishing uh, the, the data bandwidth, but also the, the time required to, to send actionable information. And this is especially um, useful in, in time critical scenarios. Just thinking about uh, uh, wildfires or vessel detection in specific areas. Mm-hmm. So for countering illegal, unlawful fishing, uh, smuggling, poaching, and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you look at the traditional uh, data handling chain, um, you have an EO satellite. This EO satellite acquires an image, then the image is compressed and delivered to the ground station. The ground station decompresses this image and places it into the data archive, and then the image is further processed into mm-hmm. the higher level products. Mm-hmm. Finally, these products are delivered to the, the, to the users. Mm-hmm. But we want to delete all these steps, intermediates, so we can save time. Yeah. And time, time can be very useful in such situations. So we place the brain directly on board the satellite. Mm-hmm. But uh, so like I said, for the, these two purposes of reduced latency and reduced data bandwidth. Yeah. Um, we have a problem. Um, the problem is that Sentinel-2 data in general level zero data is complex to, to be processed. Um, uh, the, the Sentinel-2 detectors uh, um, are placed in a staggered configuration, and each detector uh, produces a granule, which is like a, um, a mini product of the Sentinel-2 product. Okay, mm-hmm. and 
And each one of these granules uh, has all these different bands, which uh, are not placed on top of each other. They are like uh, displaced. Okay, they are not registered. Mm -hmm. So we have we need to um, to have um, an efficient uh, processing chain to co-register these bands on board before mm -hmm. apply any kind of uh, of algorithm. And that's why the purpose of, of Pyros, our library. Yeah. So we defined, okay, this is the problem of co-registration. Here is it explained a little bit better. If you look at these two uh, spectral bands, the B03 and the B04, they present an offset in the alloc track and the cross track direction. Very simply, very, in a very simple, simply explanation. So what you want is to just uh, uh, place this bench these bands on top of each other, just providing the right offsets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I ask a very naive question? If if the, the hardware isn't changing, surely the offset is constant, or does it vary depending on look angle or something? Uh, these offsets are not constant. They're not. And, okay. And this is one one of the problems because you, if you, uh, of course, have the, the have this this offset constant, you can just apply uh, over and over the same the same. Uh, uh, the same uh, displacements, and you will uh, will uh, will come up in the end with the co-registered bands. So we had to develop something different for for solving this issue. So we used um, a neural network, which is called Superglue. Maybe you already know this. Mm -hmm. Just to track key points from a band to another band, and in this way, uh, we were able to estimate the offsets between all bands. Of Sentinel mm -hmm. two, um, we apply also intensive preprocessing and we fine tune the, the parameters of Superglue in order to achieve a, a reliable co correspondence between the, the key points from one image to another image. And after that, we came up uh, with different across track and along track offsets. Mm -hmm. What do you find in our paper? For instance, if you look at these two bands, but this is uh, in practice is very general. To, to every band is that you have two distributions and uh, the, the, the subset change in base of depending on the detector number and depending on the satellite. So in the end, we came up with a um, uh, lookup table, which contains different offset for satellite detector number, uh, achieving something similar to, to this. So. Mm -hmm. We still have some kind of errors in the, in the registration, but the, these errors are uh, negligible when you want to perform this processing line. Because since it's just a, an, an offset, it, it is not so intensive to be processed on board. Okay. That, just, that's so, the idea. just so I understand, this is a different technique than when you're doing it on the ground and you have more compute available. Yeah. On ground, they use the tie points. So it, it's a similar to, to this one, but they compute the, the perfect uh, affine transform. So they are perfectly placed on top of each other. And that, is that and a manual process or is that also uh, algorithmic? No, it's algorithmic. Okay. Usually they use uh, shift points, shift key points. Okay. But it is a more computational expensive process. On board, mm. you want to save uh, energy. So you just try to use the most energy efficient strategy, you know? Yeah. So in the end, we came up with this lookup table. In the best case, we do not have errors. In general, we have subpixel levels, but sometimes you can happen that you have uh, two or three pixels of, of errors on the registration. Mm -hmm. But that was just acceptable for us because you want to save energy, like I said. Yeah. And when you talk about saving energy, can you give me like a, an order of magnitude? Are we talking like... This approach, this algorithm is 10% of the energy of the on-ground approach or something like that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay. You, you think that you want on, on board satellite, you want to use something like powers, like 1.5 watt, something very... So you want very, very small, uh, I would say lightweight detectors and something like this. Mm -hmm. So... Um, in the end, we came up with this lookup table, which is the script bought in the, in the paper and uh, in, uh, the, in our GitHub repo, which is public. 
And we also developed um, a georeferencing strategy because once you know the offset between the, uh, the bands, and once you have from the, the metadata, you have the, the knowledge, the, ge the geolocated points of these corners here, applying the offset, you can, uh, you can retrieve, like say, a, a course georeferencing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we developed this API for letting the users to work with uh, level zero data. And we also uh, delivered it, the first level zero data to the, to the users to experiment and maybe uh, make some stuff with, the, with their algorithms. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can also show our repo. In the meantime, if you have question, yeah, I was just curious with the superglue versus the SIFT approach, because if I understand the superglue is doing a similar sort of thing, it's finding these tie points, right? So, but SIFT is a very classical approach. Yeah, so it's a bit surprising to me that would be a bit more, that would be more accurate than the, the deep learning superglue approach. Yeah, SIFT is more like the standard algorithm, but uh, we, we also tried to, to use uh, standard SIFT. But in the, in the end, we came up with, uh, with superglue because it was more uh, robust, I would say, against the different changes of the bands. I would say that... Um, right. And it, but believe me, that's the same challenge for SIFT as well, right? You're doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah, the yeah bands exactly. Using SIFT. Exactly. Actually, this superglue is named as like uh, middle end because superglue is in charge of matching key points. Mm. Yeah, I can show you. So... Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I found a very interesting paper, this one. Okay. And just for the listener at home, because there's two parts of this problem. First is finding all these tie points, but then there could be confused tie points <laughs> in the wrong place. So you then have to do some sort of global optimization to find the set which are accurately matching, right? Yeah. Super glue is actually this part here of the network. Yeah. You can have a classical CNN. Uh, extractor for the key points but you can also use sift here yeah actually super glue is just the the middle end part the, the part that matching that matches these key points mm -hmm. okay uh, but in, they also use a, a backbone which is called super point and that's the one that we we also used mm -hmm. in, a, in our paper and i found very robust the way that we they that they match the key points with a graph neural network that's yeah. why we used and was there any optimization of the detector for the, the points for these? Because I'm assuming that it was trained on images on the yeah, Earth, yeah. not on Sentinel imagery. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. It was trained for the images, so uh, the outdoor weights for, for images of the, the outdoor. This is, was a technique developed for uh, for SLAM and for structure from motion. Yeah. But, but we used for for our needs. Mm -hmm. And in the came up, it worked pretty well. So um, turning back to our repo, uh, this is our repo. It is publicly available on the, the fill up uh, GitHub. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will find all uh, uh, the description for the installation, the settings uh, for the database, all, all, the, all the data available. We spent a lot of time doing this documentation. And now I can also show how it works. This is the original granule. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you can see in these three different colors, the RGB, the bands uh, are not overlaid. Okay. So with our course uh, co registration technique, we obtain this image here. But when you uh, make this offset, and you make this overlay, of course, there are some bands which have not uh, plenty of pixels, you know? Because in this area here, we have the, the three bands, but here maybe I have only two, and here we have only one band. Right. So one strategy that you can do is just to crop, so eliminate this, this area here, where you do not have the other bands, mm. and you obtain with this, uh, this granule here. And another strategy is to fill 
this area with information coming from another granules. Mm. Okay. So from another detector of Sentinel-2. Okay. That was basically the approach. Uh, maybe I can show you the API. Okay. Okay, once you have all installed and all set it uh, in uh, your environment, there is a quick start tutorial here. So how to use the this repo. Mm -hmm. And now we, we're going to launch it together, <laughs> hoping that all works. Mm. So it requires a GPU uh, for the registration. Mm, no, 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 no. It, it, it works standardly on law, also on CPU. Okay. Presumably, there's not a GPU on the Sentinel satellite itself. So this technique, no. and is yeah, the yeah. idea that this library will actually be deployed onto the satellite, or you'll somehow extract yeah. out parts of it to some other our, format? Our idea is, is to deploy on, on satellite. Yes, right. So PyRaws and Python will be running on the satellite. Yeah. Now oh. here we <laughs> we, we select the GPU. So. In this case, uh, we are working with a specific data set. We have two developed data set. One is throws, it's for the fires, for detecting fires. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the one that you seen yesterday, VDS2 row, it's for detecting vessels mm -hmm. in Sentinel-2 row. Um, so we can select the event from the database. So we have a, we have a specific nomenclature for the events. Etna 00, it's a name for the Etna volcano. Hmm. And 00 is uh, uh, the product 00. We can specify some bands that we want. And then through the API, we create this event object. And from database, we retrieve everything about that product. So hmm. in this way, we're ingesting all the information inside the, the event class. With the method show granule info, uh, we can actually see uh, some information about the, the event, like the, the event, the name, the sensing time, so when it was acquired, the detector numbers, and the polygon coordinates about that granule. Hmm. So we can get a specific granule from the event. Like I said, they, they are different for each product, we have all these mini products. And we can pick some of the of the of the bands of a specific granules. Mm -hmm. We can stack granules on top of each other, and we can retrieve uh, again info informations about these granules. And just to clarify, is that stacking process? Is that doing the registration there, or is that already done as a pre-processing somewhere? No, no. Here we're not doing uh, any uh, registration. Uh, I can I I will show you in this. I just in, saw that, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we do course score registration, see? So you can see the, the, the shifts of, of the bands in a long track and a cross track direction. Mm -hmm. And you see here uh, that the, the two granules are placed on top of each other and the bands are shifted. Again, once again, this region here does not contain all the information. So it's it's up to the user select which is the, the best processing for them. It's just to crop. Yeah. Or... I mean, already in my mind is this question that would I need a different model if I was going to operate on a region with fewer bands, or can I train a model that will just apply but with maybe worse performance in that region? Yeah, it can be. For instance, for the vessels, uh, I think that one one single band could also work for the detectors. So maybe you just even don't, not, do not need to make a, a registration, but it's something that we, we have to test. Mm. But in, in the end, I, I, I'm not sure that a model trained on the whole three bands could perform better with only one band here. I think the, the, the performance will be worse. Yeah, I mean, that's intu intuition, but the question is how much worse, I suppose. Mm, yeah. So, like I said, we can make the, um, the co-registration. I can take a, uh, a single granule. I can perform the, the co-registration. And I'm going to show you. This is the granule with the, the bands not co-registered. Mm -hmm. And this is with the, our 
co-registration strategy. Of course, you cannot use any kind of uh, deep learning model on this unregistered image, as you can uh, as you can understand. Mm. It will be very tough for a model understanding all the dynamics in there. Yeah, and that's what and that's why we developed this uh, this efficient pre-processing strategy. Yeah. Okay, I think this part of the the notebook is just to show you how the um, the filling works, mm -hmm. the granule filling works. So you hear the difference. Okay, here we have no no information, and here is filled with information from another granule. And is that doing sort of interpolation on some other band that's maybe at a lower resolution and therefore providing no, no, that no, information? No, no, or? no, no, no. no. It, this information comes directly from uh, uh, another detector because in, in certain sense, they are overlapped. There are some yeah. regions that are overlapped between the detectors, but here the information is missing and from yeah. the other detector, not. So we take okay. this lacking information from the other detector. Right. So it might be, let's say, if the red was not... Uh, Imaging there, an NIR might be so you would use the NIR instead of the red for that region. Would um, you? Apologies for the maybe I'm, I was wrong explaining. The detector, uh, each detector uh, detect all the bands. Okay. Okay, so there's multiple detectors, okay. and they, uh, they are there are multiple detectors. Exactly. Okay. Each okay. detector, each detector creates one granule, and each granule is composed all of all the, the 13 bands. So, okay. um, so you do not have a, a granule with a single band. You have a, always a granule with all the bands of Sentinel-2. Okay. And here we show all the different uh, possible cases that you can do with uh, the DC API. Mm -hmm. So you have the unregistered image, course co-registered image, the course co-registered image field. So with information coming from another detector and the course co image cropped. So we just delete this information. Okay, and finally here, this part is just to show the georeferencing, like, uh, like I told you earlier. Okay, here is computing all the shifts and here computes all the georeferencing for each of the bands. Mm. We also developed a simple function to plot these polygons in a Google Earth engine. But, and this one was just to report the, the L0 to the L1 corresponding. Because when we developed our uh, dataset throws, we want to spot fires. And mm. to spot fires, we started from the, the L1C. Okay. So, so we started from the L1C and we came up to the L0. And by started, you mean you train the model on the L1C? No, we do not use um, a deep learning model. We use the, a standard signal processing algorithm that detects fires based on a threshold. Mm -hmm. And then we take that segmentation map and we report that maps on the corresponding level zero. Okay. And that's how we develop throws, this data set of level zero fires. Okay. Okay. And I think data set is reported here. Okay, this was the data the, the algorithm that we used for detecting fire. Okay. Yeah. I have to add the data set here. <laughs> yeah, papers of code is a really good resource for mm. aggregating, you know, data sets, code and paper. So this allows you to now that you've got pyrores, you can create this process where okay we've originally trained a model on l1c we can now change the data set keep the yeah. masks get a data uh, a data set we can then do you think you need to re train a new model for the l0 i think i think you have to at least make a, a fine tuning yeah. if you already have trained the model from the, uh, the l1c because right. the data on uh, on sentinel 2 row as like in digital number so there are no corrections applied there's nothing Okay. And to so, clarify that, what PyRaws does is to help you with all the data handling. It doesn't actually do exactly. model training as part exactly. of the pipeline. Okay. Exactly. It's a tool that uh, every user can exploit to use level zero data. Okay. Because otherwise you have these bands and granules that look at different areas 
yeah. you don't know how to exactly process them. Right. Even if you have the best model in the world, you cannot just process raw data directly. Yeah. And so I assume that the the goal in publishing the library is so that other people will come along and create other models that can then potentially be deployed onto Sentinel 2. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe not on Sentinel 2 because Sentinel 2 does not have a AI computing capabilities, but on the next generation of satellites. Okay. Right. So that's a good point to clarify. So this. Okay. This code base is not actually going to be uploaded to the existing Sentinel-2 satellites, but it is for future missions. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah. And just to briefly come back to a point you raised earlier, you've also published a, a library for the ship detection, which is, an, is a separate model from the fire detection, right? And that's in a different repository. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I can show you. This is just for making uh, the, the inference with the, the level zero data. So you okay. just can use Pyros for treating the L0 data. Mm -hmm. We just released the, the products here. So here are just Pyros. The okay. images, examples here, how we train the, the object detection models mm -hmm. is here, the data set, VDS2 row. These images are coming from the, the level zero data mm -hmm. treated with Pyros. So we co-register and we export to, to GeoTIFF mm -hmm. because Pyros can also export to GeoTIFF. Mm -hmm. And after that, we label each image into the standard Cocoa notation format and mm -hmm. we train a, a lightweight model mm -hmm. like v VFNet with ResNet 18. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then to do inferencing on level not, you go to Pyros and somehow import that model, would you? No, no, no. For making inference, you do not need Pyros. Those okay. Pyros, once, once you have just like pre-processed all the level zero data and prepared for, for the inference, mm -hmm. you can just apply the, the model and in the, up, in the end, you will come up with the detections or okay. row granules. Okay. This repo is reported the, the weights, the, the, the inference model, and uh, the data set and everything you need. Mm -hmm. You can also train other models using our, uh, our data set here. Mm -hmm. And also the define and create something specifically for, for, this, for this kind of problem. Because mm -hmm. many of these uh, detectors here, like also VFNet with ResNet 18, uh, are like designed for general purpose. So they have a backbone, which is task agnostic, and then they fine tune the, the head, the head layers for a task tailored task. Mm -hmm. like, like for instance, in our case, it's vessel detection. Okay. If we can like use a, a backbone specifically tailored for our problem, for onboard problems, I think it, it will be best. It will be the best thing. Right. And do you have a feeling for how custom that would be, or would it be quite similar to what you've already got? Well, I've seen some work from the HEI working on a Yolonas paper. So I don't know if you have seen the, their architecture. Mm. And they use neural architecture search on, on the backbone to find mm -hmm. the best, back home, best backbone. Uh, I think this is a good approach for, for onboard processing. Because you don't want to, want to have something general purpose, so task agnostic. You want something very light, mm -hmm. something specific for your problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would make a lot of sense that you'd optimize the architecture for the sensors and the hardware that's going to be deployed on and make exactly, the yeah. trade-offs for power. Yeah, exactly. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much for giving us the introduction to, to Pyros and also showing us the application here with the ship detection. Uh, can you maybe hint if there's any other models in the pipeline or are fire and ships going to be the, the case study models for this approach? I think the YOLO series is a, a good way to start to, to detect vessels because they, they are very light in mm. certain backbones. Mm. Um, but like, like I said, the problem with onboard is that you do not have a, a very hyper powerful computing capabilities. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to optimize, you have to, to quantize the model, and maybe you have to apply distillation techniques. 
So we still we still have to work on this. It's right. still a, a working uh, a working project. Yeah, it's it's not solved yet. You you have further improvements to to make on these these applications. No, no, we have a lot of improvements to to make on this application. We have to quantize the model. We can distill these models. We can maybe try to to make a, a neural architecture search for defining our specific uh, backbone architecture. Mm. Um, I, I I will soon release also the paper as soon as we get published uh, about some of this consideration for for vessel detection. Mm-hmm. But in our empirically tests, uh, the, the detectors based on key points, so they perform well, uh, better than other mm-hmm. uh, other detectors. Okay. Well, once again, I'm looking forward to that conversation already. But once again, thank you for. Uh, joining me today to talk about pyros and these publications. If people oh, want to follow, <laughs> oh, thank you. If people want to follow your your announcements, which is the best platform and location for that? Yeah, well, you want my LinkedIn or a LinkedIn? Is that where you, you you post your updates? Yeah. Okay, I'll put the LinkedIn in the the show notes, and I'm looking forward to hearing future updates. But once again, thank you. Thank you to you. Ciao. Ciao. Bye bye.